I had thought I'd do a quick review on the Silver MR350 Militaire head torch. I'm quite a fan of this head torch. Um, in fact, I've now got three of them. And uh, while it is a great head torch, there are a couple of little issues that I think it's worth knowing about uh, if you're going to purchase one. So this is the most recent one that I've bought, which actually arrived today. Um, and these are all the bits that you get with it. So you get the actual torch itself um, with a nice subdued uh, head strap. Um, it takes three AAA batteries. Um, you've got a little bag that you can use as a storage bag. You can also use it to uh, to spread out the light. If you're in a tent, for instance, you can put the torch inside this little bag uh, and with a white light, it'll, it'll um, spread the light out more and make it a more ef efficient, effective light source. And then you also get some 3M uh, sticky pads and uh, a way of clipping the, uh, the head torch onto a helmet, for instance. The light itself uh, has a number of modes. Uh, it's obviously got white light. I won't show you that because it will be too much glare for the camera. It's got three different brightnesses of white light. So 350 lumens um, for the highest. I think the medium is 100 and then the dimmest is 10 lumens. So ideal uh, if you need to use white light. Um, on the lowest setting, you could get an, under a a basher or something and and that probably wouldn't uh, be visible um, from a distance. Um, in terms of the, the red light, if I press and hold, oh no, that's one of the things I want to show actually. Um, I need to turn that so it's fully on. Right, so if I press and hold, that's your, the, the red light. So red light's great for uh, night vision but one of the downsides of red light is if you're trying to use it map reading you can't see any of the contour lines on the map and silver have figured out that the ideal color for reading a map at night uh, without ruining your night vision is uh, orange light so if you press that button again it switches to an orange light for map reading press it again and it goes back to the red press and hold and it switches off and when it switches off, it gives you this green uh, LED indicator. It turns to amber and then to red um, to let you know the, the battery state. OK, so it didn't switch on to begin with there um, because I'd turned the cap that holds the batteries around slightly. And that was one of the things that I wanted to mention. I've had this torch in my webbing um, and uh, needed to use it and discovered that the, the batteries were flat or that the torch had switched itself on in the webbing, which isn't ideal in any kind of tactical situation. Um, so what initially I started to do was turn one of the cells around. And that, of course, changing the polarity of the cells means it can't switch on. But then you're left with a problem. If you've forgotten to sort that out um, and it's dark, you, it's pretty difficult to uh, to see which cell you need to turn. So more recently, I've discovered that if you turn the, the cap, so partly that's the open marker and that's the closed marker. So I've got it roughly halfway between the open and closed and that acts as an isolator switch. So now I can't accidentally switch the head torch on if it's in a, in a webbing pouch or a chest rig or whatever. Um, so that's ideal. But what's the other downside then? So this is a tactical head torch. It's marketed as being robust enough for tactical use. Um, the oldest one I've got is probably approaching four years old. I'll, I'll bring it into the video now so you can see what's happened to it. And that's, that's what's left of the frame. Um, I had it in my chest rig and uh, it wasn't quite as bad as this. The, the base plate had snapped um, that means it can't stay on the on the strap anymore because obviously the strap needs to pass through those gaps here and here. Just get my little pointer. So the strap needs to the strap is held in because it goes around these loops. Um, and obviously when this when this snaps off, well, when the base plate is now in two pieces, the strap can't really stay on there anymore. I then 
uh, decided to remove the torch completely from this so I could still use it as a sort of a pocket light. Um, but that's, that's an inherent weakness. And when you look at the amount of plastic that actually, if, we, if I get this other one over, let's get the strap off. This one has already got some um, stress marks where it's starting to, it's been bending. It did have a crack there and I've used some plastic weld and hopefully that will remedy it for a while. Um, but these are inherently weak, these points there, there, there and there. And I've mentioned this, I've, you know, I've let Silver know um, they could make this a lot more robust, a lot stronger if they, um, instead of uh, having it attached like that, with just that thin, just this the thin piece of plastic holding it at those points here and here, if they made a triangular piece that went right out across to the edge, not only would it stiffen up the base plate, it would it would make the whole structure a lot stronger. We could do that at both sides. That would make it much more robust um, and uh, more appropriate, more suitable for the kind of riggers that we put stuff through when we're jumping out of prone and all of that sort of stuff. It's in pockets or, or getting, you know, crushed. Um, but apart from that, I mean, I've got three other things, so I must light them. They are a, a, a good torch. They use standard cells that you can get from a, from a SQ or type uh, person. Um, and, uh, and yeah, that's all I wanted to say. Um, so if you're in the market for a tactical head torch, this is a good one. There is a civilian version, which comes in green. Um, it's uh, the MR400. So it's 50 lumens brighter, but it's got all the same features. Um, unfortunately, it has all the same weaknesses. Um, but I've, yeah, what I've, what I've decided to do with mine is I've got uh, like a, a soft, hard case that I'm going to keep it in when it's in my webbing pouch. Uh, and hopefully that will mean that I don't end up crushing it, another one of them um, and making more pocket lights. All right. Thanks for your time. Thanks for listening.